TM, DD, TM channel viewers, uh, I decided to actually do this post covering personal finance. Uh, so many people that I know make really good money, but still seem to struggle uh, in their personal quality of life as it relates to things they can afford to purchase, as it relates to interest rates that they actually receive. Um, have you ever thought about the fact that someone you work with live in a certain community, you know they make about the same amount of money that you make, but for some reason you can't afford to live where they actually live. Well, a lot of that has to do with how we manage our money, how we manage our debt, um, how we allocate our actual inbound cash. Uh, I grew up in an environment where the mindset was basically, I'm always gonna have a car note, um, I'm always gonna have debt, um, I watched people go month to month, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Many people know the mindset of, well, I'll put something on it, which basically means I'm going to put just enough for that on it so that they don't actually cut it off, but not realizing that that's directly impacting my overall credit score, um, which is basically your buying power. So today, uh, I'm going to walk you through a couple of scenarios and I just really want you to take heed to understanding how quickly um, we can destroy the quality of life we actually want to live by making bad decisions early on. Uh, I know people whose credit scores are horrible over a $500 loan, over a $500 credit card, uh, which is really asinine to me, the fact that you would destroy your credit over such a small uh, borrowing need. Uh, and technically, you really didn't need to borrow it. I don't really know why most people go about getting these smaller credit cards if it's not to actually manage uh, their credit. People are told, well, you need credit cards in order to improve your overall credit, but nobody actually teaches you how to manage that credit card. Nobody teaches you what's the maximum and the minimum amount of debt you should carry relative to your total credit line and how that actually impacts your overall credit. So today um, we're going to walk through some different examples of how to manage money. So we're going to look at a scenario where someone is making uh, about $12 an hour, which equates to close to twenty-three to 24000 uh, a year. And then we're going to double that and see what that scenario looks like when that person actually gets married. Uh, and then we're going to look at another scenario where um, the person is actually making $100,000 a year uh, and figure out how well does that money management piece come into play. All right. So I hope you actually enjoy uh, today's uh, coverage uh, on TMDDTM and God bless. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this one. So this one is titled, How a Car Can Kill You Without Being in a Crash. All right, so for this particular one, I'm going to walk you guys through some different scenarios, give you some different situations, uh, and see uh, if any of these look familiar to you or if these look familiar relative to your behavior or someone you know. So I'm going to walk through some of the basics. Uh, and this is the thing that really differentiates people that have uh, strong money management skills and poor money management skills. So again, we talked about the fact that there are people that may make the same amount of money as you, but for some reason they live a higher quality of life uh, than you. And a lot of it has to do with either um, the overall debt that they're actually carrying, uh, the type of funds that they've actually saved, uh, and just decisions and choices that they've actually made. So we're going to take a look at uh, gross income. Then we're going to say, okay, well, what's the actual net income? Meaning after Uncle Sam has actually taken his portion of the pie, uh, how much money are you actually bringing home? And how is that money being spent? And I'm going to make some recommendations uh, as it relates to percentage of your money spend so that you can be wiser in terms of your money. But I'm going to show you just how easy it is for a impulse decision to purchase a particular car can kill um, your quality of life. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. So situation 1A. A stands for avoid. So avoid this particular situation. So here's the thing. We're looking at a single person. They happen to be smart enough and savvy enough to actually have a roommate. They're making $12 an hour. They're actually paying rent. Um, they're paying a $400 a month car note. 
and a $250 a month car insurance policy. Um, they have this roommate and this one excess, uh, excessive living expense, this car, is really detrimental. All right, so we would call this person an irresponsible uh, spender uh, in terms of money management because they allowed one, uh, one choice, one ex exclusive or expensive or well, excessive uh, purchase to completely derail uh, their path forward. All right, so it'll set them up for a long term struggle, a lifetime of struggle. So let's actually take a look at the numbers. So here we have an hourly wage of $20 an hour, an annual gross income of $23,040 uh, per year. So we're looking at a 40-hour work week, and let's assume they're not getting paid any overtime. These are just straight-run numbers, 12 hours a week, 40, uh, $12 an hour, 40 hours a week. That's $480 a week. Uh, let's take a look at... Um, the 480 um, hours per week times 48 weeks in a year, which typically out of a 40 uh, out of a 52 week year, most people take about four weeks of vacation. So that's how we're getting to a gross annual of twenty three thousand and forty dollars a year. All right. Uncle Sam has to get uh, his portion. So we're estimating about three thousand one hundred and ninety three dollars be removed for taxes, so that leaves us with $19,840 for net annual income. So that's the money that you bring home after taxes. So now if we go ahead and divide that by 12, that basically means that I have about $1,654 a month to actually live on. All right, so let's take a look at some of the common life expenses here. So again, we're classifying this one as a poor judgment spin. This is a large car note, which actually is classified as a killer uh, in, in terms of its overall impact. So this particular person is doing some really smart things, but one poor choice is going to destroy their situation. All right, so we're looking at them paying 15% of their net income. Uh, in rent. So they're only paying $250 a month because they were savvy enough to get a roommate. They have renter's insurance, again, which is another great idea, which basically means if there's ever a fire or anything, their personal belongings within that rental unit, they'll be um, reimbursed for those. So it's only $10 a month. Highly recommend anyone that's renting uh, that you actually get renter's insurance. So they are paying 4% of their gross income to a mobile phone so they're paying ninety dollars a month that's not very uh... savvy as it relates to their money management that's a lot of money for somebody to be paying for a cell phone bill but they may be stuck in that situation because of bad credit and so when you have bad credit that doesn't give you the most favorable terms in terms of trying to get a cell phone contract with some of these carriers all right they're paying seven percent of their uh, net income to their utility bills so that's sixty five dollars a month uh, again and that's with them splitting that with a roommate so again smart move there uh, four percent uh, is their cable or internet so that's thirty three dollars a month again they're splitting that with the roommate another really good move so um, here's the thing the items you see in red twenty five percent of their monthly net income they're paying toward a car alright they're paying more for their car note than they actually pay in rent so four hundred dollars a month then you add on the auto insurance which is uh, twenty uh, two hundred and fifty dollars a month which basically means if you're paying that much on a four hundred dollar a month car note either a you've been in a couple of accidents or you're not very favorable as it relates to accidents you you've been in so you're gonna have a higher interest rate uh, a higher insurance rate or you happen to be really young and you've purchased a car that is classified as a sports car. So again, these are things you want to think about. And then let's say that they're averaging about $120 a month. So to get to and from work, that work we're talking about, uh, let's say a tank of gas is $30. So across four weeks in a month, that's how we're getting to $120 a month. So food, we're looking at about $13 a day. 
uh, to cover food, which is really being conservative because the average person will consume more than that. But we're looking at about $13 a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to get us to $413 a month to cover their, their food expenses. And then, of course, you have your personal hygiene care. So we got that at about $75 a month. That includes, like, uh, haircuts. That includes um, uh, soaps, um, lotion, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, just, just the basic necessities of, of um, personal hygiene. Uh, and then uh, home cleaning products and laundry products, we're looking at about $25 a month. Again, that's being split with their roommate. So total monthly outgo is about seventeen thirty one versus their income only being sixteen fifty four. So that makes them negative seventy seven dollars per month. So that's approximately a thousand dollars short per year. If that's if nothing goes wrong, nothing goes wrong. So these are just the basics, the common life expenses. So let's move forward and take a look at uh, some of the other expenses that weren't listed, but. It's part of life because life happens, right? So for those of us that are church going and believers in tithing and offering, 10% uh, of the uh, net income there would be $164 a month, which currently uh, from the last scenario, they're not even in a position to actually uh, tithe. Uh, can't do any personal savings, don't have any additional funds to do any uh, fun activities outside entertainment. Uh, let's hope that the car that we purchase doesn't need any repairs because we don't have a repair budget. Uh, hopefully you're provided with health insurance from your current employer. Uh, if not, you got to be thoughtful about that. So health insurance and dental insurance. Uh, then you have to furnish a place that you're actually in. So you might need a budget for furniture uh, and any home appliances. And then if you happen to be uh, interested in dating, uh, again, this, this particular person is single, uh, you need funds to actually date. And then you need a clothing budget. You have to put clothes on your back. So again, these are all things that technically our numbers tell us this person cannot afford, even though they're making $23,000 uh, a year. Again, the, the big caveat in this is the car that they're dealing with. So, so as you can see, they're on a path to either have their car repossessed or certain bills are going to go unpaid. The bottom line is this car is going to kill their credit. So let's assume that their credit is actually in decent standing. Uh, within 12 months, the choice to get this car and pay that amount uh, is actually going to uh, cause this particular individual to destroy their credit, something this simple. So let's say this person is 22, 23. Uh, this particular choice right here is going to impact the rest of their life because your credit score is going to determine your interest rate, your credit score, which basically means how much money can you actually borrow uh, from a bank. Um, and it'll tell you how much it's going to cost you to borrow that money. Uh, it can even impact who you end up marrying. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, let's say for, you know, for guys that are listening, there are a lot of women who are savvy associated with the importance of having good credit. Uh, I know people who have dated women and when they found out what the guy's credit score was, they weren't interested in dating the guy anymore because they felt like that was a representation of their ability to lead uh, a household. All right. So just some things to kind of think about and vice versa. Uh, and there have been guys that I know have stopped dating women uh, when they found out that the women that they were dating were really bad with money management. So it can definitely impact your, your life. So let's add some real life what ifs to this scenario in the same situation. Remember, we have no cash reserves. Uh, we're short every month as it relates to uh, being able to cover uh, the additional $77 to $78 of, of payment. So I'm not exactly sure what you do to try to cover that gap. And again, let's assume you just got this car. Let's assume it's a five-year loan. Uh, and this is the situation. So you're basically tied in. If you're 23 and you're looking at locking yourself into this commitment for five years, you're, you're talking about being stuck in this situation until you're 28. Most people aren't going to want to maintain a roommate until they're 28 years old. All right, so let's talk about this. What if the roommate leaves before the car is paid off? What if the car needs repairs? Uh, what if there's a car accident and you don't uh, and you can't cover the deductible? Uh, what if the rent goes up 10 percent, but you don't actually get a raise at your job? Um, what if you happen to have a child? 
um, lo and behold, what if what if you find yourself in a situation where another set of uh, poor choices put you in a situation where you end up uh, having a child? Uh, what if you decide to go on a date and spend just fifty dollars a month more than you have? <laughs> so as you can see, this is what we call a death row downhill. Uh, a death row downhill actually means that uh, you don't have the ability to recover once this thing starts to snowball. So this is all, again, due to the fact that you can't afford a particular car. Now, listen, a car dealership will tell you that you can afford a car, even though technically you cannot. Because the one thing that they know is, worst case scenario, they can always come back and repossess that vehicle. The problem is most people think other people have greater interest in their personal financial situation than they do, right? It's they, they don't have a greater uh, interest in your personal finances. What they do have a greater interest in is your cash, all right? So as long as you make that payment, they won't bother you. But the moment that you stop making that payment, they're going to come and repossess that car. It's going to destroy your credit. And then next time you're trying to get a car, you're going to get even less favorable terms in that particular situation. So let's take a look um, at this particular situation here. Situation 1A is a death row situation. Uh, now, if this happens to be the average 18 to 24 year old and you're starting off into the real world, uh, hopefully you guys have a greater appreciation for what your parents have been able to accomplish and keeping a roof over your head, feeding you uh, and making sure that you, you know, you don't realize the struggle that they go through. So if this looks like your current situation or soon to be situation. Uh, immediately go and thank your parents for everything they've actually done thus far in your life. So. <clears throat> Life just became real for many of you in this particular scenario. I will guarantee you um, more, more than not, many of us know someone who has went out and purchased a car that they really couldn't afford because they were looking at the fact that I get paid every two weeks and I'll pay that with this check. It doesn't work that way. You have to be able to, to take a look at what your total monthly expenses are, what your total monthly income is, and divide it by monthly spend. The numbers don't lie, but if you play the game of I get paid um, on the 15th and the 30th, or I get paid every two weeks, and you try to say I'm going to pay this bill with this particular uh, check and another set of bills with another particular check, and you're shorted in paying those bills, it will eventually catch up. So you must look at both monthly and annual relationship between incoming cash and outgoing cash all right that's the only way that it works i'm sorry guys the numbers don't lie the reason that i'm actually doing this post is because i found myself having a discussion with a nephew of mine uh, a young man that i treat really like my own son and we found ourselves having a disagreement he's 23 uh, associate with what he can and cannot afford and i'm trying to explain to him how money works um and he just he didn't want to hear it. So uh, I love him, but he's going to have to find out the hard way that um, his situation is dire. All right. So um, the other thing we got to consider, no more $100 gym shoes, no more expensive cell phones. You know, most people like to keep up with the latest and greatest. Uh, no more designer clothes, no more Dutch Brothers coffees or Friday happy hours, which, you know, a lot of young people are into right now, uh, simply because of the purchase of that vehicle. Uh, more concerned with social status and the car you're driving. Here's a harsh reality. Most people don't care about their car after about six months. After about six months, the newness wears off. You know, you go back and remember, oh, I really had to have this car. This was my dream car. You know, I know people that won't wash their car again after six months, but yet they've spent over $20,000 on a particular vehicle, which is a modest spend for the average person, but which is a lot of, a lot of money for a person who only makes twenty-three dollars to $24,000 a, a year. All right. So there goes any chance for maintaining a decent credit score. And that's just another penalty of one poor decision. So he was doing all these things right. And then he let his emotions uh, and his desire to buy this this car uh, get in the way of um, managing uh, a good money situation. So let's take a look, look at the next situation. We'll call this situation 1B. So in situation 1B, again, we have a single person with a roommate making $12 an hour, paying rent. He is still paying a car note at insurance, um, but he has a very, very modest living habits, all right? 
only the most responsible person will will make it. Okay, only the most responsible people can make it uh, as it relates to a twelve dollar an hour uh, income here in in the United States. So let's take a look at the numbers. So again, hourly wage twelve dollars an hour, gross annual income twenty three thousand uh, and forty dollars. Uh, so again, we're talking about Uncle Sam t taking his share out. So that's thirty one ninety three. Uncle Sam is taking out. Again, leaving us with a net annual money in our pocket after taxes of nineteen thousand eight forty seven. Divide that by twelve, so we're dealing with sixteen fifty three, um, or let's round that up to sixteen hundred and fifty four dollars. So let's take a look again at the common life expenses and see uh, how the spend is for uh, person B here in this particular scenario. So 15% of their income is going toward rent. So again, they're splitting it with a roommate. Wise move, $250 a month. Uh, they have renter's insurance. Again, wise move. Cover your uh, personal belongings in case of a, a catastrophe. 4% is being covered, uh, paying toward the, the mobile. So they're paying $66 a month. Uh, they're contributing 3.4 of their um, uh, income goes toward utility bills. So we're talking $60 a month being split with the roommate. Um, their cable bill, they've cut that in half because they're splitting it with the roommate. So they're paying $33 a month. And then 10% of their income, they've committed to war, spending toward an automobile, which you really don't ever want to go greater than 10%. So that means they know they can't spend more than $166 a month. So they went and found a car that was $166 uh, dollars a month uh, for their insurance. I'm sorry, for their, for their, um, their loan. And their auto insurance is only going to be $83 a month because, again, they didn't go out and buy a sports car. They bought a modest car to get them to and from work. And, again, we're estimating about $120 a month in gas. Uh, anticipating about 25% of their monthly spend going toward food. So that's $413 a month. Personal hygiene remains the same at $75 a month. And then their home cleaning products and laundry, which they're splitting with their roommate, is only about $25 a month. All right, so their total monthly outgo is about $1,300 versus their income being $1,654. So that leaves a surplus of $353 a month. Again, all these things are the same other than the vehicle um, from situation A versus situation B. All right. So let's take a look at these expenses again um, that we didn't list here but are critical. So 10% uh, of their income can go to tithing. So $164 a month can go toward um, uh, supporting um, uh, the church. Uh, so you got personal savings can, can actually be afforded in here. You have a little money for additional uh, fun and entertaining things. Um, auto repair budget health insurance, dental insurance. If not provided, you can get some basic uh, element of coverage. And then uh, you have a little bit of money every month to buy a few things for the house, furniture, uh, appliances. You have a little dating fund. Uh, and you got a little clothing budget. So again, just realizing where they decided to cut back and where they were smart with their money span, the only difference was that car. So in one situation, one person is going to completely destroy their uh, path forward, their credit score, which is very difficult to get it corrected uh, long term versus them just being smart and using a vehicle to get them from point A to point P, point B. Now, again, I'm not telling you guys that, you know, I'm a car lover myself, but I'm very thoughtful about how I'm going to obtain a car. Uh, I only pay for my car's cash. So when I know that I'm ready to start looking to buy a car, the money that I would normally be spending toward um, a monthly car note, I just put that into a savings account somewhere and I save that money up or into a money market account and I'll save that money until um, I reach a particular dollar value that I want to spend relative to my gross, um, to my net annual income and then say, hey, I'm willing to go and purchase this car outright and you get a much better deal when you show up someplace with cash. All right. So as you can see, this $12 an hour with no children uh, and uh, being smart about uh, your car purchase or even just taking public transportation, it can absolutely work uh, and leave you an opportunity to actually save up some money. So <clears throat> um, my recommendation here is to continue doing what you're doing. Uh, the only thing that I would add is try to pay the car note off as quickly as possible because that'll give you an additional $166 a month of overall savings. So see here, we actually highlighted it in the red 
here to actually pay off the uh, car note as soon as possible so that, that can be additional funds toward your your savings so um, $353 per month um, save car note when paid off and pay cash for your next car so those are the overall recommendations so situation 1b is a winning hand situation versus 1a so most 1824 year olds uh, don't start uh, in the real world this way um, if this looks like your current situation or soon to be situation your financial maturity is above par all right you're, you're performing at a, at a higher uh, learning capacity and a higher application capacity than the average 18 to 24 year old that thinks, hey, the light bulb will go off one day and then I'll get all my stuff together. It's very, it's much easier to maintain um, your current situation of having uh, a good credit score and start working yourself into a very good credit score all the way up to an excellent credit score. So, so life just became real for many of you. Uh, and actually, for those that have the 1B situation, your life is going to be pretty enjoyable. You're going to be asleep at night. You're not going to be worried about lights getting cut off or cars being repossessed. Once you pay off your car note, you can save close to $500 a month. All right, that's crazy. So between what you're already capable of saving and the car note, that can be $500 a month. So you're talking about an additional $6,000 a year. That, that's actually amazing. And we're talking about a person who's only making $23,000 a year. All right. So that's more money in your account. Right. That's the goal. Our goal is to keep more money in our account than to actually give it away. So let's take a look at situation two. We have a married couple with an annual income of about forty six thousand four hundred and eighty bucks. They're actually paying a mortgage. So they're not renting. They're paying a mortgage. They have two car notes uh, and they're paying car insurance. Um, they have a little bit of credit card debt, no student loans. So neither of these individuals have student loans. So that either means a, um, they got scholarships to cover college or B, they went directly into the workforce, but they were savvy enough to figure out, um, how to best manage their money, um, without getting student loans. All right. So again, we'll cover uh, the decisions around student loans in another topic uh, or another post that I'm going to put up because it's a whole nother thing to kind of think through. So let's talk about some modest living habits that they'll have. So we'll walk through it. They have modest li modest living habits. So let's check the numbers with these guys. So again, we're talking 46000 uh, a year in gross income. Uncle Sam has to take his cut. So he's taking about 7200 of that. So that leaves us with a net annual of about 39000 Divide that by 12. So I'm dealing with about $3,237 a month of disposable cash uh, to live off of. So let's take a look at some of the life expenses um, and some recommended spends by percent. So 20% of their money goes toward a mortgage and property taxes. So they're paying about $647 a month between mortgage and property taxes. They have mortgage insurance, with their, which they're paying $30 a month on. Homeowner's insurance, uh, $55 a month on. They have a home security system. They're paying $35 a month. Then they have a family mobile cell phone plan covering uh, themselves and their two children. So it's a family plan and it's charging them or costing them about $130 a month. They have utility bills. So it's a decent sized home. Uh, they're paying $350 a month in utilities. So that's electric, uh, water, gas, um, what, whatever the total cumulative uh, utilities are that they actually have to cover. They have cable and internet. So they're paying $195 a month and they're only paying 10% uh, of their gross in terms of their automobiles. So either A, one of the cars is paid off and they're making a monthly payment of $323 a month for one car or both of them have cars that they're paying uh, less than about $150 a month per vehicle um, that way. Uh, ideally, uh, in this situation, more than likely, someone is driving a car that's actually paid for and they're just looking to pay the other car off. Auto insurance between the two is $170 a month. Their gas coverage is about $230 a month uh, to get them to and from work and to take the kids uh, to whatever weekend sporting events that they have going on. Food coverage for a family of four is about $810 a month, which is is about right and that's with you being savvy in terms of your buying at the grocery store personal hygiene care items for the families hundred and forty six dollars a month and then the home cleaning products and laundry runs about eighty dollars a month uh, for a family of four 
All right. So then they actually have a credit card that they're paying on and it's one hundred and twenty dollars a month. So not a whole lot um, uh, in terms of their monthly payment for the credit card. The question is, is that the minimum payment and they're actually carrying, you know, a large sum or is that just where they're kind of their sweet spot paying more than just their minimum payment? But let's take a look at this. So their total monthly outgo is three thousand two hundred and seven dollars versus their income being $3,237. So they're negative $100 per month. So that means they're going to be short by $1,200 a year. That's assuming nothing goes wrong. And these are, you know, pretty modest numbers, guys. So it's not as if these guys are spending um, haphazardly. But, you know, if you don't measure it and you don't track it, you can't control it. So at least with this layout, they can figure out what they can and can't cut back on. Uh, what they can do differently, because as of right now, this is going to adversely affect their credit score. Uh, it's going to keep them up at night. Uh, very often it, it creates arguments and hopefully they're not pulling from the same uh, checking account uh, to pay bills either, because right now that means they're going to be running negative balances and actually um, pulling funds that aren't there, getting penalized by the bank. So just a lot of things to kind of think about. And again, we're talking about a pretty decent income um, between these two, um, uh, between this family of four. All right. <clears throat> so expenses we didn't talk about again. Tithing. Again, they would be paying an additional three twenty four a month toward uh, uh, tithing um, to support uh, the gospel. Uh, personal savings. They don't have any personal entertainment, additional money for fun activities. Again, auto repair budget. Hopefully somebody has coverage from their employer as it relates to insurance and dental. Uh, they have to furnish their house. Um, you know, it's good for mom and dad to go out on a date sometime. Uh, they don't even have additional funds to give the kids um, for additional outside activities. So, you know, they're, they're just finding themselves uh, in debt. And so here's what's typically happening. Most people are funding this through their credit card. So they're, they're watching their credit card uh, go higher and higher and then they continue to apply for more credit and they just keep building this. And, you know, the the perspective of this is, well, I'll get a raise or I'll find a new job. And so you're just kind of playing into this best case scenario. All right. So um, when you take a look at this, we're looking at a $46,000 a year uh, income with two children. And this is a killer. All right. Again, th this is this is a killer uh, in terms of the situation. So some common life expenses, some things that I'd recommend that they could do different. All right. So notice they're already doing a really good job with the fact that their um, mortgage and property taxes only take up about 20 percent of their net income. They don't have to get cell phones for their kids so they can downgrade that phone plan. Um, they can remove cable and just keep the Internet. You have to have Internet nowadays. Nothing functions without Internet, even the kids homework assignments. So they can reduce that um, uh, and just actually carry the basic Internet coverage. Um, and so. As it relates to their gas spend, uh, again, they're only using 10% of their um, their auto bill, so that that's not uh, aggressive. But another option, again, of course, could be to just go and try to buy a car outright cash, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 car to get them to and from. That's an option to remove that, but they have to save up the money to be able to go and, and do that. Um, or they can just purchase it with a credit card and just pay that off um, in an expedited fashion. Uh, another option is to actually consider joining a carpool um, to minimize on their overall gas fees. All right. So I live in Phoenix and it's not uncommon for people to do carpooling out here. You know, it's a strong thing people do out here in the West Coast between Los Angeles, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, Arizona. Carpool is, is a great way of minimizing uh, some of those overall expenses or just actually jumping on a sound public transportation system somewhere. All right. The other thing they can do is if they're paying eight hundred and ten dollars a month is, you know, shop with coupons. There are a lot of apps out here nowadays that you can upload to your phone. Like if, you know, my kids love McDonald's, so I won't go to McDonald's without pulling up my McDonald's app. And there's always like a free large fry or a buy one, get one free happy meal. You know, large fry is almost three dollars now. So, you know, that goes a long way in terms of just um, keeping some additional cash in your pocket. So again, these guys are headed for disaster really fast, even with a $46,000 um, a year uh, salary and 
we're looking at them being modest in their spend. So it's not as if they're they're being grotesque in their spending. It's just that you can't spend what you don't have. So they got to figure out ways of cutting back on this. But again, you can't see any of this stuff unless you're laying this stuff out so you can actually see it. You have to uh, analyze it. So situation two is a grim situation. Uh, now that you've seen the average married couple start into the real world, uh, if this looks like your current situation or soon to be situation, you should sit down with your spouse uh, and really talk about ways to cut back. Life just became real for many of you. Again, this is just an honest and simplistic uh, straight talk walk. You know, I'm not getting into um the deep dive associated with structuralness in Excel spreadsheets. I'm just giving you the fundamentals, the basics that anyone should be able to do. Doesn't require a college education, right? So I have a chemical engineering degree uh, and I have a um, uh, master's in business administration and international business. And school didn't teach me any of this stuff. This is stuff that I had to go out and investigate for myself. All right. So with a $39,000 bring home uh, cash bucket into their house and living a modest income uh, and having a combined car note that's not greater than $325 a month, you know, it seems like these guys were on the right path and they're doing all the right things to be modest. But the bottom line is you don't have it. So you got to stay away from the more expensive smartphones. Um, you can't be, you know, trying to shop for designer clothes and you can't, can't afford to go and spend five dollars at Starbucks. Right. That's another silent killer. Right. The stuff, you know, listen, everybody believes they deserve uh, to have a certain uh, lifestyle. I don't disagree that you deserve it. But it's not about what you deserve. It's about what you can afford. All right. That's being uh, sound in terms of money management. Let's take a look at situation number three. So we have a married couple. Um, they have a gross annual income of $100,000. They're paying a mortgage. They're only paying one car note uh, and they're insuring their vehicles. Um, they have a little bit of credit card debt. They do have student loans and they have a modest uh, living habits. Let's check the numbers. So at $100,000 a year, Uncle Sam has to get his cut of the pie. So Uncle Sam's going to take out $21,500. Now again, this is if you happen to work for someone. If you happen to be a uh, business owner or self-employed, there are a lot of other uh, options that you can deduct some expenses relative to your business. Um, but that's that's the topic for another time as well. So again, after Uncle Sam takes his, his portion out. It's going to leave him with about $78,500 uh, uh, bring home pay annually. If we divide that by 12, we're talking about $6,542 a month. So it sounds like an awful lot of money to the average person, but I'm going to show you how quickly that money can, can move. All right. So again, if they're spending 20% toward their mortgage and property taxes, you're talking about a $1,300 a month mortgage payment, uh, mortgage insurance at $75 a month, homeowners insurance at $85. They have a home security system at $35 a month. They have the family mobile phone pack, which is $130 a month. Utility bills is about $400 a month. Cable and internet, $195. They're spending 10% toward automo their automobile, so that's $655 a month. Then their auto insurance across both cars is $230 a month. And then uh, gasoline is about two thirty a month. Now again, I don't know if this six fifty five represents one car or if it's a split between two car notes. All right. Either way, they're within that ten percent rule of their total gross or their total net income on their spend. So twenty five percent again is their food. So that's eight ten a month. Their personal hygiene. Uh, it's one hundred and forty six dollars a month. Their home cleaning products and laundry, they're spending about $80 a month. And then they have an $800 a month student loan. Uh, student loans that they're paying between both of them to cover uh, their uh, student loans. And then they have about $200 a month they're paying toward their credit card debt. So their total monthly outgo is $5,379 versus their income being $6,542. So that leaves them a positive um, overflow of about $1,163 a month, which is pretty decent, right? But you see how quickly in this particular scenario, um, they got to $5,379. That, that student loan is a killer, but at least they were smart enough not to go out and buy expensive cars because they feel like, hey, I have these degrees and I'm entitled to have these expensive cars. Um, they're, they're focused on paying off these student loans. 
All right. So they also still have money to do their tithing at six fifty four a month. They can put away their personal money toward their personal savings at about ten percent. And then these other categories here, um, you know, they can work around. Again, they may not be able to put ten percent into their personal savings any uh, every month if they work off the fun and the the entertain uh, spending fun and entertainment activities. If they uh, reduce or have run into a situation where they have to repair something on their their automobile, but at least that leaves them free and clear to actually pay their tithing uh, without missing a beat. All right, so as you can see, it is critical that you track your spending just so you can see where the opportunities are. All right, so <clears throat> as we take a look at uh, some of the uh, things they're actually uh, doing right now, we finally see a situation where this group has a chance to get ahead. Um, it looks like the college situation paid off for them in terms of their uh, annual income. But again, that meant they chose particular career paths that were going to provide a decent source of income for them. I know a lot of people that went to college have degrees, but they really didn't uh, focus on anything that would allow them to um, differentiate themselves in terms of being able to get a job paying, you know, forty to fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, it's a tough pill to swallow when you have a college degree, but you find yourself working at a call center with other people that didn't go to college and you're making the same salary, but yet you're, you're having to pay back four to five hundred dollars a month. So you got to be thoughtful about what career path you select as well. All right. <clears throat> so these guys, once they pay off their car note, they're in a situation to save an additional almost eight thousand dollars a year. So, again, stay away from the car note if you can try to pay cash for your cars or try to pay that car note off as quickly as possible. And you're going to be amazed at how quickly you can save cash. Cars are a killer. Cars are a killer. It's a depreciating uh, item. You cannot classify it as an asset. All right. So depreciate unless you're in a situation where you're dealing in classic cars um, and that's a whole different um, um, financial bracket uh, for for dealing in that space. All right. So situation three is another winning hand. Um, this is um, a situation where you had a few financially sound married couples kind of keeping things together. They're road mapping how they actually want to spend um, they're obviously talking about uh, minimizing their overall debt. So again, if this is your current situation or soon to be situation, it should really uh, you should really sit down with uh, as a couple and discuss some of these things. So I know again, life just got real for a few people. Again, every one of these situations is going to be familiar for someone. All right, so you know, send this link to other people. Make sure they have a chance to kind of hear it and digest it. Again, this is not complicated, ladies and gentlemen. These are simple rules. Um, you know, certain percentages you want to allocate to your spending toward and live within those ranges. So, uh, honestly, even if uh, $78,500 in bringing cash, uh, you should never exceed a combined car note greater than $650 a month. Again, the goal is to keep your money, take trips and cruises, create experiences that last a lifetime with your family. All right. So don't make it about a bunch of stuff that you purchase and depreciate and break down and have to be fixed. You know, there's a whole world to be seen, travel, explore, uh, make lasting memories with your family. So again, one of these scenarios fit every person, you know, all right, someone will know these particular situations and there's, there's a learning opportunity for someone. So do them a favor, <clears throat> share the post, uh, together, we can change our quality of life by teaching our kids good money habits and principles early on, long before they have to get into it. You know, I'm teaching my kids good money habits at five. So um, they understand the importance of saving. They understand the importance of looking at how much money you actually have and how much money you can actually spend. Uh, the importance of tithing, the importance of uh, making sure that you're saving for a rainy day. So <clears throat> it is time for us to recommit to money principles, stop being victims of poor money management and become victorious over our money management. All right. So again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're coming back full circle for our TMDDTM uh, coverage of money management. I'll be posting uh, additional links. I'm going to post something that talks about credit, help you understand how credit scores work. Uh, so cool. So stay with us. Um, like the video. Um, Subscribe, uh, share this content information, 
guys, I'm committed uh, to this channel, to sharing things that I had to learn on my own uh, that my dad didn't teach me. And I want to share and teach other people in a very short, simplistic um, uh, way. And so let's uh, do this together. All right. God bless you. All right. So walk you through four different scenarios. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. We really have to do a better job of uh, handling our finances. I've given you guys a basic foundation, some sound principles you can actually apply. Don't try to overthink it. Uh, guys, this isn't complicated. It's really just a matter of committing uh, to uh, improving your overall quality of life. Uh, stay tuned because next week I'll be posting uh, information about the importance of your credit score, how we manage that. Uh, again, these are very simple principles uh, to build your life around and it will improve your quality of life. Your credit score will determine your quality of life, your buying power, um, things you can actually do, how much money you can borrow, how much you have to pay for that borrowed money. Um, so just make a commitment, guys, to doing your due diligence, investigate, get a better understanding, teach your kids, speak uh, make the time to sit down with your children and explain to them how money works. Uh, and even if you've made some mistakes in the past with managing your personal finances, uh, be sure not to let your children uh, be prey to that same situation. Um, we're creatures, creatures of habit. We have to break generational curses and continuing to struggle financially uh, is a generational curse. Um, uh, thinking in terms of, you know, what we classify as a ghetto mindset. Uh, the ghetto is a state of mind. It's really not a place. Um, so we have to change the way we think uh, in terms of uh, elevating our situation and setting a better path uh, for our children. All right. So God bless. Uh -huh.